one of the happiest days of my life. That was the day that I got Bandit. Today I'm going to tell you his story of how I came to find him, how he came to live with me, and the progress that he has made. I've done it in several videos in part, but today we're going to do it from the beginning. On September 25th of 2019, I was visiting my friend Linda May in Taos, New Mexico, and I ended up having to cut my visit short. And you can see that video on the link that just flipped above. And also, you'll be able to see Linda May this fall in the movie Nomadland. I'm so proud of her and all that were involved in that movie, and it's just going to be awesome to see it on the big screen. But I was there visiting with her, and I had to cut my visit short because I had been registered with, let's see, PetFinder.com, AdoptAPet.com. You can register on those sites, and I would registered for five different states. I'm also a member of the HumaneSociety.org and BestFriends.org, the Best Friends Society, and I did a video of when I visited there. And so in 2019, I was ready to get a new pup after having lost my Nani and Bentley in 2017. That was a rough year and it took me a while to be ready to have a new puppy, but I'm so glad that I did. But I was in Taos, New Mexico visiting Linda and he showed up in Nogales, Arizona. So I called them and they said, well, we can hold him for one day, but that's all. I'm like, well, you're 600 miles from me and that's about a 10 hour drive minimum and I can't do that. It'll take me a few days. And she said, I don't think we can do that. But she called me back the next day and she said, we can do that if you'll head here right now. And so this was the picture that was on site. And I think it was through PetFinder.com that I found him. And I took off heading from as fast as I could from Taos, New Mexico to Nogales, Arizona and went through Sierra Vista because my friend Tiki took me to go get him. So you saw the video of me picking him up and then we went back to Tiki's and in fact she still owned this rig that I now have and he got his first bath in the sink. He wasn't too sure about it but he did good. The next day we took him for his first trip to PetSmart and I'll tell you about all of his first because you're not going to believe what this little guy has done and accomplished. I'm so proud of him. So he got toys and a whole bunch of things but he didn't know how to play with toys. In fact we went from there to City of Rock State Park and it was the in October almost a month later before he started playing with a toy. Here is the first time I looked out and I saw him actually picking up a toy even though I had been trying and trying every day to get him to understand that they were his and that he could have fun with them. After that, we went to Silver City, New Mexico, chasing 70. You know how we do. And we held up in the forest for a couple of weeks. And you guys, he had never even seen lizards. <laughs> He kept barking at the forest and I couldn't figure out why I kept thinking a bear was going to come up over the ridge or a mountain lion or something because he would just growl and growl and growl and it was lizards. Check this out. It was while we were in Silver City that I noticed that Bandit had lumps in his tummy that weren't normal. And his uh, stitches that had come out, um, well, let me back up and say when I went to the shelter, they told me that he was originally from Nogales, Mexico, and that they had an arrangement at the Nogales, Arizona Humane Society that when Nogales, Mexico had adoptable pets, if they had room, they would take them. So he is originally from Mexico. They did not do the neuter um, at the Arizona shelter 
they inherited him from Mexico with those stitches and it just didn't look right to me. So I took him to the vet in Silver City and I'm so glad I did. It was there that I found out that he had probably had a DIY at home neuter job in New Mexico. I mean, not New Mexico, Mexico, and had probably escaped. And um, that is how the shelter came to get him. All of that is speculation, but the vet was pretty sure um, that it was a DIY neuter job. He had to go in and do reconstruction, redo the neuter and uh, reconstruct uh, because they cut out some of the urethra and anyway this poor little boy had to have major surgery and I was and he also the vet showed me at the time I'm so I get so upset talking about it he showed me at the time all of the scars that bandit has all over him and the way that the scars are and underneath and everything he's pretty sure that he was a bait dog in Mexico as well so after that, to rest up and to get to know each other and to just figure out this poor dog and what, what he's capable of because he was um, attacking me when he would eat and all kinds of things and stay tuned for the updates on that because he's come so far. But to just give ourselves some times, I went to the Patagonia Mountains in Arizona and we went deep and we just hung out where we didn't see another soul for quite a while and Bandit got to heal up and we started training each other. <laughs> After he rested up, we started heading west. And uh, by this time, it was getting close to the end of October. And so Bandit has been in two countries and now nine states. And you guys, if you're doing the math, you know that that's just in 11 months. He's done all of that. And he's gone from biting and attacking me. I used to couldn't even put food down without, with that, when I started to back up from putting his food down, he would attack my feet and put holes in my shoes. Uh, I have scars on my hands and arms from him attacking me, not knowing when he was safe. And now look at him. He still has his issues, but we're learning each other and I'm training him and he is learning to trust. He's learned to sit, shake, wait until I release him. He's and and uh, like if I want to go out the door or something, he learns to wait until he's released. He's learning to sit and stay until he's released and then run toward me. And of course, he learned to fetch when he was with his friend Rosie in Alabama and at my Chuck, my friends Chuck and Letty. And he plays with other dogs now. Here's a video of him learning to or showing you that he can sit and wait to be released to eat and that he shakes. And after that is a video of him playing fetch. I'm so proud of him. When I first got him, you guys, he had not even seen moving grass. We would walk by and grass would blow and he would growl and back up. I, I, so I don't know what his history was, but moving grass, you saw the lizards, horses. He had never seen horses before. And you can check, check out that video here. Let's see what else. Oh, I know I took him to his first time to the ocean and you can see that video. And also when I used to sneeze or cough, he would just panic because he didn't know what that sound was. So here's something fun picked him up on September 28th, 2019, and it was September 28th, 2015 when I bought my van, Fancy Free. Of course, now I'm in my RV, Freebird, but at the time that was Fancy Free, and that's where he started out with me as well. And so they told me when I got him that he was four years old, and I'm like, well, I've been in Fancy Free since October. So I gave him the same date that I hit the road. His birthday is October 8th. I hit the road in 2015, the same year he was born. So his date and my date on the road is October 8th, 2015. How cool is that? We're coming up on a year together and he's going to be five and I'm going to be on the road five years. Who knows what's coming up next? We're glad you're on this journey with us and we hope that you'll stay tuned and see where all we go next. Say, so see you down the road, everybody.
Bye.